Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, guests, uh, His Excellency Mr. Sam, and Ms. Santosh Das, the guests from outside, obviously, uh, keynote speaker, leader, George Duggins, deputy leader, Abdul Salam Khan, colleagues, friends, and all equality matters, all friends of equality, welcome, welcome to the council chamber. This is, first of all, can I, it's from the bottom of my heart, thank Lord Mayor for facilitating this. Because uh, this is the first time I, I and most of you know, we've been doing this in some many years. But this is the first time we are doing in council chamber. And that's kindness of Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is, uh, on coming back, there's a facilities, those who want to go out for loose and so on. There's a, a go straight for the outside. Then on the left, through the door, there's a ladies and gents uh, place. If you don't know, please tell us. Some, some of us are here, so know how to, uh, we can guide you there. That's the first part. There's no emergency. There shouldn't be any emergency in case there's happening. There are many of us. The way we came, that's the best way to go straight out. Uh, the outside uh, with the open space, that's the gathering place. So there shouldn't be anything. I haven't heard anything in my 32 years in the council, anything like that, thankfully, and it's, it's unlikely to happen at all. But be, be on your guard always. It's just keep in the mind. With that, little introduction. I am Ram Lakha, although I am known more because of being a councillor, but I also chair this equality group, Coventry Equality Group, which we set a few years back. Rather than me saying anything, uh, I request my colleague, who was the first chair of equality group, Paramjit Jassal, to say a few words, then I'll follow as, uh, as the time comes. Paramjit, thank you. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, His Excellency Mr. Saxena, Leader, Deputy Leader, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Palmjeet Jassel and I am the Founder Chair of the Equality Group Coventry. Today is a very special day in that it is the birthday of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar who stood for equality. He was born on the 14th of April, 1891, some 131 years ago. So let us all take a moment to say, happy birthday to Dr. Mbirgur. <laughs> Thank you. You can sing if you want, Lord Mayor. <laughs> um, so the concept of equality became enshrined and adopted in the Constitution of India on the 26th of January, 1950. The Equality Group Coventry is based on these principles of equality. Our aims and objectives are as follows. To better understand, respect and promote the work of international leaders who made equality their life purpose and in turn gave a great people a great gift to all people. We seek to highlight instances of inequality and use our influence to resolve these with others. We make recommendations to the Lord Mayor for the Dr. Ambedkar Award for Equality and there will be more on this in a little while. We celebrate Equality Day on the 14th of April to promote equality, and that's exactly what we're here for today. We aim to have a committee which is diverse so that we can harness different experiences, learning and skills. Most of you here will know Ram, the founder member of the Equality Group, who has been instrumental in organizing and celebrating 
Equality Day for many years. This group is in its infancy with a small membership and we would very much like you to come and join us to further our cause. Please do seek me out later should you be interested. So in the final moments of my speech, I would like to ask you all a question. Who likes to give presents to their loved ones on their birthday? I certainly do, and I'm sure there's a few others that do. Well, today we have a great opportunity to give a long-lasting, sustainable, earth-friendly present. And what is it, you might ask? I would humbly request our leaders at Coventry City Council to consider and formally approve the 14th of April as Equality Day. Thank you. Thank you, Paramjit. I think some of you may know Paramjit before. She used to work in the city council as finance officer. Obviously, then she left and gone uh, other places. Thank you very much. Uh, now I request, a, we have a group chosen, renovation group. Chosen renovation group, please. Is, uh, I request you for a song, please. Thank you, before we get into the rest of the mode. the group chosen um, we were invited today just to sing and just to further celebrate this celebration of the connecting of um, different cultures and the, everything that's going on today and yeah so we're just here to perform for you guys <coughs> We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You Thank you very much. Can I also thank first, alongside the group members, Mike, and uh, making it happen, and also uh, 
what I call Queen B. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, without, with, her, with her help, it's nice that we are managing these things. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I think formally, yes, I request our Lord Mayor to grace the occasion by saying a few words first before we do something else. Uh, uh, his ex, uh, sorry, the worshipful Lord, uh, worshipful Lord Mayor of Coventry, Councillor John McNicholas. Thank you, Councillor Lacker. That's the first time I've been introduced to my formal title. Uh, so, very grateful. Lady Morass, Leader of the Council, Deputy Leader of the Council, Councillor colleagues, friends, thank you for coming into the Council Chamber today. This is the heart of Coventry's democracy, so you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us today and showing how strongly Coventry feels about equality and fairness for all. Together with our twin cities around the world, we strive to celebrate equality every day. We are inspired to do so by many things and many people. Some of those great names, such as Dr. Bim Rap Rao, I knew I'd say this wrong, and, and Bedkar. Others are not so well known, nor ever will be. These are the people Coventry welcome and are those who make that welcome possible. The people of our city have opened their doors to others from around the world for many decades now. Those who join us do so for jobs and education, to build better lives, or sometimes to flee aggression and persecution. <clears throat> they show such courage in becoming Coventrians, and they then, in their turn, help to welcome others and give them the help and support that they need. And I'm minded um, of uh, a peace conference we had in the cathedral late last year when a refugee from Afghanistan spoke and he explained what and why um, he fled Afghanistan and his journey to Coventry. And he was asked, how long did it take you to feel Coventry? And he said, 24 hours. Now that to me, and the person I'm speaking about now chairs the Scottish uh, Refugee Council. So the fact that he was made so welcome in Coventry is a measure of the city and what we do um, to make people welcome. And we continue it today. As Lord Mayor, I've been so privileged to see that work and meet so many of our communities. And it has been truly inspirational. I mean, I'm advised we have 150 language, languages now spoken in the city. People come to Coventry, people are welcomed, and people enjoy living here. As we've been informed, April the 14th is the birthday of the great social reformer, Dr. Ambedkar, who was born over 130 years ago and classed as an untouchable. He campaigned all his life for social reforms and justice for all. He fought for the poor and, and the victimized and gave them a voice. And I believe he would be proud of Coventry and its people. Thank you so much to our colleague, Councillor Ram Lacker, and to the Coventry Equality Group for helping us to celebrate this important day. Sadly, 
Last year, we were forced to meet online due to COVID. So it is good to see you all here today. And thank you again to Mr. Saxena for making the trip to join us. The City of Coventry will always stand for equality, peace and understanding. And today, we send that promise to the people of Ukraine and others who are suffering horrendously. And the outrage that we see daily in our living rooms, on the TV, is horrific and it is why Coventry took the decision to suspend its link with Volgograd. Not against the people of Volgograd, but against the Kremlin and against Putin for what he is actually doing in trying to erase Ukraine itself. So I think we've sent a strong message and will continue to do so and welcome representatives of the Ukraine community here today. So let us continue our work together for a better, more peaceful world for all. And thank you once again for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worshipful Lord Mayor, for gracing this occasion. Um, it's wonderful to have, see that uh, support behind the motive, behind the aims of Equality Group. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I, I was looking for Rachna somewhere, uh, but till then, she's not here, seems like it, uh, probably still in the office. Uh, I'll request my good colleague, uh, Maya Ali, uh, who should be here with her friend, is mainly because we thought it's a good to have a variety rather than English everything. So she can, uh, I know I am so grateful to Maya, despite uh, obviously this occasion of fasting, uh, to manage this, to sing. Uh, and it's a, it's a one thing which I, I admire her ability and the song she chose also, which is close to my heart, uh, probably as old as I am, that song, and it's brilliant. Uh, I'll leave it to her, to, uh, to, uh, with her friend, to sing. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Thank you Ram. Thank you, Ram. Good evening, everybody. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, nice to see so, so many familiar faces here. And um, it's just amazing how Ram has uh, got everybody together today. I won't be singing because my voice is gone, because I've had a congestion nose for the last two weeks. So I brought my friend along today. I couldn't disappoint uh, my friend Ram. But um, the song that my friend will sing, I've been uh, singing that song since I've been a teenager. And it's such a beautiful song. And it actually relates to equality. So a lot of people here that don't, don't understand the, the word, um, which I'm assuming you won't, it's in Hindi. And it's, it says that Allah, God, made everybody equal. So it's a Hindu banega na Musliman banega. Insan ki aulad hai, insan banega, which means in the song it says, are you going to be Hindu or are you going to be Muslim? You are um, a son of a, a person, an insan, human. You are going to be a good human. And that's what the song is actually says. So I'll just introduce my friend, Milawat Bhai. Will you come here, please? He's always um, helped us out in singing in the events I've been, um, um, I've, I've had in the last uh, 15, 10, 15 years. So Milawat Bhai, can you come here, please? Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And I'm fasting as well today. And that's why I'm, normally I'm singing on track, but today is just a uh, normal singing. Okay. 
and this song is really hard uh, uh, lang uh, word is really hard anyway ab kai bani apne mal ke aayu tu hindu banega na musliman banega insaan ki aulad hai insaan banega tu hindu banega na musliman banega insaan ki aulad hai insaan banega अच्छा है अभी तक अच्छा है अभी तक तेरा कुछ नाम नहीं है तुझको किसी मजहब से कोई काम नहीं है अच्छा है अभी तक तेरा कुछ नाम नहीं है तुझको किसी मजहब से कोई काम नहीं है जिस इल्म ने इंसान को तकतीम किया है उस इल्म का तुझ पर कोई इल्जाम नहीं है तो बदले हुए वक्त की अब पहचान बनेगा इंसान की औलाद है इंसान बनेगा तू हिंदू बनेगा न मुसलमान बनेगा इंसान की औलाद है इंसान बनेगा मालिक ने हर इंसान का इंसान बनाया हमने उस हिंदू या मुसलमान बनाया मालिक ने हर इंसान को इंसान बनाया हमने उस हिंदू या मुसलमान बनाया कुदरत ने तो बख्शी थी हमें कही धरती हमने कही भारत कही ईरान बनाया तो चोड़ दे हर बंदे वो तूफान बने गा इंसान की औलाद है इंसान बनेगा तू हिंदू बनेगा न मुसलमान बनेगा इंसान की औलाद है इंसान बनेगा सॉरी आई एम फास्टिंग दैट्स वाई इज प्रॉब्लम थैंक यू सो मच व्हाट ही से व्हाट ही सेइंग इज दैट ही इज फास्टिंग एट द सेम टाइम ही हैज हैड फूड एंड वाटर फॉर द लास्ट 10 10 आवर्स सो बट ही इज नॉट बैड सांग टू बैड आइदर थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग thank you maya i think those who are into bollywood they will remember this was actually a song in the film called dhool ka phool i think it was released in 1959 so you can remember the old times when the films were uh, black and white and this actually touches my heart every time i listen to it because it's about humanity all cutting out the boundaries which man made boundaries in my view uh, but that's uh, where the song, song is so uh, great uh, uh, touching my heart all the time thank you very much uh, and can I, while we are actually uploading this song alongside the singer can i also upload for the previous group uh, especially mike who suddenly accepted my request on the phone and we talked about it and he managed it thank you very much now i skipped earlier because i wasn't sure uh, that's what i was looking for uh, uh, i can i request his worshipful lord mayor councillor john mcclickles to present the award the award just give you an understanding we as a last year when we did online this equality because we couldn't get together at that time there was a proposal came in through our chat box that we should have dr ambedkar award for it for equality and he is the symbol of equality those you might have studied in some other countries couple of cities actually they have already declared uh, 14th of april as equality day or day of equality and there are areas in india today specifically even the government and i require, i i i i thank um, 
uh, um, His Excellency uh, Mr. Saxena coming here because they are already organizing in the office. That's why uh, uh, Council General himself could not be here. That's why uh, he is here. So it is being uh, all over the world, Canada. Uh, it's being, uh, and, and America, New York, I remember when once I visited, there was there, uh, all kinds of stuff. This is a big campaign. There's equality everywhere. Not equal, equality talked about, but not celebrated. The reason I'm saying, I, I, forgive me for renting on, this issue, there is, a, uh, there is a name for every day, Mother Day, Father Day, uh, uh, or any day, UNO Day, Chocolate Day, Party Day, but there is no Equality Day. That is where I've been pushing that. Some of my other colleagues, uh, Santosh uh, is there. Obviously, some of us are campaigning. Uh, uh, Ravi, thank you very much for coming. And these are people who are instrumental doing this uh, work on the behind the scenes. Uh, so we can do some, it's a national issue, not national, international issue, it's International Equality Day. So I think that, so that's where the idea of uh, Ambedkar Award for Equality came last year. And then, obviously, uh, uh, we had the uh, submission of five, six actually. Out of six, we took five, because uh, we thought that's, that need to be narrowed down. Uh, nominations for Equality Award. Then, neither Lord Mayor himself, nor any of us equality members want to get involved because most of us knew somehow. So we thought it'd be a good idea to ask help on this. So we passed on the officers of the city council who deal with these issues to make a decision. Can I thank Peter and his team? Uh, uh, they always have been helpful on these issues. Thank you very much, Peter. Peter uh, uh, is the head of library and also the new communities and he was uh, awarded CBE. And uh, it's very grateful that we are, we are there, proud of him that he does the work for this. And he was once a speaker as well for this Equality Day in 2018, I think it was. Yes, uh, so this is the issue, uh, that's why we have the award. And now may I request, and uh, as I said, th this group of officers chosen, Langer Aid, no, it's no surprise to anybody. Because uh, though every, every other organization was deserving, but the part is what they have extra, they are doing in internationally without favor and uh, without expecting anything. And uh, somehow when it was started, I remember uh, Avtar's dad uh, talking to me, and uh, that's how it started. And he said, thank, uh, today when I asked uh, Avtar coming here to collect the award yesterday, or day before yesterday, whenever we spoke, she says, uh, dad is in Poland. My belief is he's doing the same work there with the refugees. So I request Avtar to come here first. There will be two photographs. I'm, I make it clear for, uh, for us, those who are in politics, it's better to be clear in that way. The Lord Mayor will present the award to Avtar because uh, she is the coordinator of uh, Langerheid. And then there are some of us refraps behind it. Uh, some, uh, uh, Marcus works very hard on this. He's, he was out there as well. So the next photo will be Marcus, myself, Lord Mayor, and Lady Mayor S. and Avtar. Uh, so there'll be, uh, so nobody can accuse us, we are being political biased to anybody. So therefore, I request uh, Avtar to come here and Lord Mayor, please present the award. Thank you. I stop my rattling.
sorry, sorry, yes. Uh, yeah, carry on, please. Yeah. Lord Mayor of Coventry Council, Councillor John McNicholas, Lady Mayoress, Leader of City Council, Councillor uh, George Duggins, Deputy Leader Councillor Abdul Khan, and our friend, Councillor Mr. Amlaka, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First of all, on behalf of Consulate General of India, Birmingham, I wish to thank the organizers for making us a part of this event. Dr. Ambedkar came from, from a very simple background. His father, Ramji Maloji Sakpal, was a subedar in the British Indian Army. And being a Dalit, he faced a lot of undue discrimination, from not getting a proper place to sit in the school class, to not being allowed to drink water from the well in school directly. He had to take help of, the, of a PN. And if the PN was not there, no water. That's what he wrote in his autobiography also, no PN, no water. But he overcame all that. <clears throat> Not only did he overcome all that, he educated himself and went on to become a scholar, barrister, a great leader, thinker, reformer, <coughs> jurist, and economist who gave India its constitution. He imagined a society where social harmony and equality could prevail. For this, he dedicated his entire life. He gifted India with such a progressive and inclusive constitution, which has been deepening and strengthening the belief of our fellow citizens in democracy. He was a great scholar who studied in places like Columbia University, New York, and London School of Economics. On 30th June last year, a portrait of Dr. Ambedkar by David Newen was placed in Gray's Inn, London. The portrait is based on a photo taken by Life magazine in May 1946 by photojournalist Margaret Bourke White. I'm very happy that the Equality Day is celebrated on the birth anniversary of Dr. Ambedkar, who imagined and strived for a more equal world. Therefore, it will be entirely appropriate to observe and declare 14th of April as the World Equality Day in his memory. Once again, I thank Coventry Equality Group for organizing this event and making us a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the kind words and thanks also for coming and uh, from Birmingham, obviously, is a traveling time. Uh, you have to have a bit of an effort to do it, certainly. Sometimes I shy it when I'm, I'm invited many times. I, I shy sometimes. Yeah, but that's very good. Thank you very much for your uh, 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 speech as well. Yes. Uh, I think I missed one thing earlier during the photo opportunity. Uh, it is uh, the certi the certi uh, it's a certificate for Langer Aid signed by our Lord Mayor and also by myself as a chair of the equality. So please, uh, Lord Mayor, will you please be kind? This certificate is presented by the Lord Mayor of the City of Coventry, Councillor John Matt Nicholas, and Chair of Coventry Equality Group, Councillor Ram Lacker, to Langeraid, in recognition of them receiving Dr. Ambedkar Award for Equality on the Thursday, 14th of April, 2022. Oh. Now, I have my personal interest in the next item, but I won't tell much. Uh, it's a song, 
uh, be sung by Mandeep, uh, who will, you will know from the name, why I say my interest. Mandeep will sing the song. Mandeep? Mandeep Laka, I should say, then you'll probably understand it easily. Yes. One moment. Um, so yeah, my dad has asked me to sing a song. I tried to keep something in, not too political, but almost anything about equality tends to have a kind of a political bias. But so this is by um, I've done a few songs like this in the past, but this one's by Paul McCartney or the Beatles. It's called Blackbird, and it was based after the Little, Ri Little Rock uh, race riots happened in the 60s. He wanted to write something to bring attention to them. So he wrote this song, and it's called Blackbird, and he's said explicitly, Blackbird isn't just, well, it's a metaphor, but it means explicitly it's about a black woman, um, who might, what they might have experienced. Colleagues, I forgot to ask one thing. If anybody uh, uh, don't want the photo taken, there's cameras here working on, so please shout. So cause the, there's a there's facility here. It's being recorded, so please be mindful that if somebody doesn't, please show your hands, otherwise it's being recorded. Thank you. Sorry, Mommy. <laughs> and uh, when I was learning this song, my mom used to sit there and listen to me learn it. And it's not very enjoyable to listen to anyone learn a song. It's very annoying. But her birthday was on April the 14th as well. She died about 10 years ago, but she used to listen to me learn this song about 20 years ago. So I haven't played it for a long time, so bear with me. If you know it, why don't we sing along? Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of a dark black night Thank you, Mandeep. Uh, I, obviously, I was a bit mindful. That's why you might have seen me going back. Because uh, my granddaughter is there. She was looking for water while I came to the recipe part of it. Uh, <laughs> th th thank you very much, Mandeep. Uh, now, uh, I would, as I said, we've got the keynote speaker. 
Uh, I, sh I shouldn't get it wrong this time. <laughs> I previously mentioned uh, uh, wrongly that this, the, wor the work she'd done with the museum so long, and I thought she was a, uh, was a chair. That's where my mistake was. Obviously, then she corrected me. So I just mentioned Santosh is a former civil, civil servant who held senior roles, including better gov governance and risk management at Department of Health in Whitehall before leaving to concentrate on charity work. Santosh has been involved with the campaign to outlaw caste-based discrimination for nearly 20 years. She is founding member of Caste Watch UK in, two, uh, in 20, uh, 2003. Actually, that was launched here when I was Deputy Lord Mayor, that, that uh, Caste Watch UK was launched from here from Council House. And the Anti-Caste Discrimination Alliance in 2008, at which Santosh has been the chair of, uh, sin, of uh, since uh, 2018. I think his secretary is Ravi. Yes, Ravi Kumar is here too. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, she has been president of Federation of Ambedkar and Buddhist Organization in UK since 2014. In 2015, she successfully secured the government of Maharashtra's purchase of the 3.1 million house in London in which the great social reformer Dr. B. R. Ambedkar lived in, uh, in 2021, 1921, 22 in order to turn it into a museum. That's why I, I was misunderstood that she done so much work to persuade the government. And I'm sure the uh, Council General's Office will uh, vouch for this. Uh, they have been doing a lot of work on these things. And then later on, a uh, lot later on, actually some years ago, Santosh was awarded MBE for her service to battle legislation in 2007, Queen's Birthday Honours List. So Santosh will be giving her side of the equality. Thank you, Santosh. It's your floor. Thank you. I put my glasses on. Old age catches up with everybody. Um, your Worshipful Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Kevin Matten, my dear friend, Councillor Ramlaka, my friend Paramjit Jessel, Chair of the Equality Group, and distinguished guests. Celebrating uh, Equality Day at Coventry Council's house today on the 14th of April, which would have been the 131st birth anniversary of the great Indian social reformer Bimrao Ramji Ambedkar's birth, is ex extra special. For Coventry, a city of equality, and the UK city of culture to hold its Equality Day celebrations on this date is very significant for the thousands of his followers from the Indian diaspora. And I'm grateful that uh, Mr. Saxena from the India High Commission is also here. I first visited Coventry in 2003 and I'm in awe of the city's long history of men and women fighting for justice and equal rights. Whether it's Lady Godiva's battle for fairer taxes or activists fighting for better housing, paying conditions, or it's residents fighting for justice for victims of caste-based discrimination that has sadly been imported to this country. Your city is packed full of m women who have spoken up on behalf of oppressed and the voiceless. It's a city of women who fought for social change from the suffrage struggle to the miners' wives. And it might therefore be of interest to the women here who don't know about Dr. Ambedkar that as India's first, independent, uh, first um, minister, uh, in independent India, the first law minister, in 1948 introduced the Hindu Code Bill. And this bold legal initiative saw several laws passed in the 1950s that facilitated the legal recognition of women as equal citizens. And it granted Hindu women the right to a divorce from an unhappy marriage, the right 
to inheritance, not only of her husband's property, but also of her father's, and the right of uh, inter um, remarriage as well. And we take these things very for granted in, uh, in our times, but the plight of Hindu women had already taxed Dr. Ambedkar over three decades. In 1917, you know, by the time he introduced this legislation in 1914, he'd already been thinking about it for, uh, for, for, for 30 years. In his paper in 1917 that he published, he wrote it in 1916 in America as part of his PhD for, uh, for Columbia University, but he published it in 1917 called Castes in India. Um, sorry, let's go to the next page. Just bear with me, sorry, sorry. Um, Castes in India, the mechanism, genesis and development. He set out in the Indian context the ways in which women and their sexuality is controlled. And it's whether it's through sati, and you may recall the alarming scene of a young Indian widow expected to get on the funeral pyre of her, of her husband in the film Around the World in 80 Days. Um, Sati was outlawed as part of the constitution as well in, in, in India. And child marriage and restrictions of widow remarriage and intercaste marriage. And there were massive, as expected, there was massive resistance to the bill from those who argued that government had no right to interfere with the personal laws of the Hindus. And even if those laws made for a more just society and an equal society. So who was Dr. Ambedkar? And I know that Paramjit and um, my friend Ramji here um, has said a little bit about it, and of course the Lord Mayor has as well. But Dr. Ambedkar was a great visionary, a politician, a lawyer, barrister, economist, a prolific writer, staunch egalitarian, non-violent revolutionary, a progressive humanist, and a key figure in the revivalism of Buddhism in India. And he's a figure on par with Dr. Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther when it comes to civil rights. Now, I can't even begin to cover in this short speech Dr. Mbedka's academic credentials, his vast published writings on numerous topics, the decades-long movement he led on passive resistance, and the many social reforms he helped introduce, including the far-sighted constitution for India, for a vision of a society based on liberty, equality, and fraternity. Even the Reserve Bank of India that exists, and that almost is in every town, uh, was based on his guidelines in, when it was launched in 1935. So we even have him to thank for the economy of India in many ways. And Dr. Ambedkar fought hard to be able to give a voice to the millions of Dalits, previously called untouchables in India's caste system. And he continued to do that right until the end of his life on the 6th of December, 1956. And from the few lines of introduction that I've given uh, about Dr. Ambedkar just now, it may interest you that in the film Gandhi by the late Sir Richard Attenborough, there's not even a walk on part for Dr. Ambedkar. That is how invisible a lot of the untouchables have been for so many years and continue to be. And Dr. Ambedkar came from humble beginnings, as has been said. He was born in a military cantonment town of, in the central provinces, uh, which is now Madhya Pradesh, on the 14th of April, as, we, as we're celebrating this day here today. Um, his family were from Maharashtra and belonged to a community of untouchables. That is uh, the caste system, within the caste system, untouchability and the caste, uh, caste system has existed for thousands of years in India. And he was a very, very bright student and with scholarships and later with his own savings, he attained degrees and doctorates, not only from India, America, but also the United Kingdom. And his many qualifications include a PhD, in 1917 from Columbia University, Doctor of Science in 1923 from the London School of Economics, and a barrister at law in 1922 
from Gray's Inn, London, and it's the centenary of him being called to the bar this year, and we're celebrating that as well at Gray's Inn. Dr. Mbedkar arrived in London the second time in 1920 to complete his studies that he'd already begun in 1916, but had to leave because his scholarship had ended. And he came this time, the second time around, with a letter of introduction from the Maharaja of Kolhapur, who wrote to his friend in the UK, Sir Alfred Pease. And I'll just quote a little bit of the, of the, of the introduction for Dr. Ambedkar from, uh, from the Maharaja. He, this is what the Maharaja wrote, he, and he's referring to Dr. Ambedkar, intends to lay before the enlightened public of England the view of non-Brahmin Hindus who are unanimous in the option, uh, opinion that in asking for home rule, the real objective of Brahmins has been to regain and establish their long lost power. And the present scheme of self-government of India will not make the people free and equal, but will only make the Brahmins powerful. Request, sir, please give patient hearing to Dr. Ambedkar. And I think it's, it's always the benefactors and those people who introduce you, you know, that ends up, uh, uh, you know, helping. Um, overcoming great obstacles, he became involved in the, India's uh, independence negotiations, and he published journals and advocated political rights and social freedoms. On the 20th of March, 1927, he led a Satyagara, a Satyagara is a passive resistance movement. Normally, that's associated with Mr. Gandhi, but in 1927, uh, he led the Satyagara in Maharashtra, in Mahad, in a place called Mahad, just for his people to go and drink from a public uh, water tank. Now, a law had been passed in 1923, but unfortunately, the so-called higher caste um, wouldn't allow people to draw water from these public tanks. And we've talked about the difficulties of, uh, of, of, of the suffering that he's, you know, he's, he's been through himself. Now, the Mahad Satyagara began three years before Mr. Gandhi's much-publicized salt march that you saw in the film Gandhi, if you've seen it, uh, in, the uh, in 1930 as an act of civil disobedience to protest against British rule. But Dr. Ambedkar's Satyagaras, not only on the water tank, but other social rights issues, never did get the same level of international attention. And there's a sad, but it's up to us now in the work that we do to be able to promote this. In the 1930s, Dr. Ambedkar, I said, attended the landmark roundtable conferences in London on the future of India. And there he championed the need, political, social, and economic of the so-called untouchables under, after independence. His robust lobbying resulted in the British colonial government's announcement in 1932 of the formation of a separate electorate for the depressed classes in the, in the form of a communal award. Mr. Gandhi opposed this and went on a fast onto death by way of protest in, in the prison in Pune. And on the 25th of September 1932, Dr. Ambedkar reluctantly signed what is now known quite famously as the Pune Pact. And this resulted in significantly reduced pro-equality representation for the depressed classes in the provincial legislators within the general electorate. We can only imagine what a difference political representation of Dalits might have made if Mr. Gandhi had not resisted Mr. Ambedkar's calls for proportional representation. In 1936, Dr. Ambedkar published a bold and significant undelivered speech, the annihilation of caste. He was due to deliver it in a conference in Lahore, that used to be, that is now Pakistan, and, but was part of India. But the organizers would draw their invitation unless Dr. Ambedkar made changes to the content of that speech. And the bit that they had an issue was, was where he said um, that he didn't have a choice to become a Hindu, to be born a Hindu, but he would not die a Hindu. 
He refused to make any changes, as you would expect, being the bold man that he is, and uh, he published it instead. And if you haven't read the Dr. Ambedkar's Annihilation of, of Caste speech, it's not a very long speech, please do read it. And uh, Arundhati Roy's introduction, The Doctor and the Saint, uh, with the annotated copy is, is a really, really good wider perspective. I mean, to me, the annihilation of caste is Dr. Ambedkar's unapologetic... <clears throat> unapologetic truth of the caste system and the everyday impact of it on so-called low caste and so-called untouchables. The speech is relevant today as it was then. A Dalit by birth, Dr. Ambedkar knew about caste impacts and he didn't just examine caste, you know, just Indian caste, but he examined it in the context of other societies in the context of Roman, Greek, Irish, and that demonstrated within her speech his deep consideration and analysis of those societies. And he quotes from uh, the British social activist, sort of within the speech, William Morris's poem, A Dream of John Ball. And in the speech, he paraphrases the hedge priest's preachings and sermonizing that fed the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. And the quote, you know, that is in the speech is, the great treading down the little and the strong beating down weak, the cruel men fearing not, kind men daring not, and wise men caring not. And this is what our Equality Day here and the celebrations and the work that you're doing is all about, is try and deal with some of those inequalities. And Embedka saw William Morris's potential for transferability. A Dream of John Ball, the poem, illustrates what it means to live under the weight of feudalism, call it caste, call it a kind of social apartheid. And in his speech, he poses the question, should we treat them, that is the untouchables, as unequal because they are? And he sets out his thoughts and principles and practices of, on what a society should be based on, which later ended up, um, I mean, he said that my ideal society would be based on liberty, equality, and fraternity. And these principles later dissolved and resolved in the preamble to in India's constitution with a complete recipe for delivering not only equality of treatment, but equality of opportunity. And Dr. Ambedkar held numerous roles. I'll just quickly go through those. Um, he was India's first Minister for Labour from 1942 to 1946 in the British Viceroy's Executive Council. He was the Chairman of the Constitution Drafting Committee from 1947 to 1950 and the Chief Architect of India's Constitution. He saw the, uh, this saw the abolition of untouchability and introduction of affirmative measures in the form of reservations for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in public sector jobs. And this leveling up agenda, as we kind of talk about leveling up, uh, you know, in India, what he, he saw and continues to be um, is to uplift those people from the Dalit communities and the tribals. As independent India's first law minister from 1947 to 1951, Dr. Ambedkar actively oversaw laws to improve labor rights. He promoted trade unions, reduced working hours for factory workers to eight hours a day, and introduced maternity rights for working women. Now, all of these things don't necessarily get applied, but the principles are there for a much fairer and a more just society. And he went on, of course, you know, like I said, is to promote Hindu women as part of the Hindu Code Bill. And Dr. Ambedkar died on the 6th of December, 1956. His contribution to his homeland was magnificent, and yet it took the Indian government until 1990 to posthumously confer him with the Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian award in India. And Dr. Ambedkar has left a huge body of works, and his star continues to rise around the world, and he's followed by hundreds of thousands of people the diaspora in this country and millions of people around the world. In this country, 
He has an entry in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biographies as someone who's made a significant contribution to the UK. Um, I did an entry for Lord Lubbock, Lord Eric Avery, uh, recently for the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, and I know from personal experience how difficult it is to get anyone in this over 200-year-old uh, dictionary. You have to have really made a significant contribution. And at Gray's Inn that, uh, um, that Mr. Sixena mentioned, there's all, actually there's three portraits of Dr. Mbedka there. One from 1972 that was donated by the uh, Mbedka community from Wolverhampton. And then in, 19, uh, in 2016, the Government of India, to mark Dr. Mbedka's 125th birth anniversary, there was another portrait donated. And in uh, last year, uh, the Grey's Inn, after much lobbying by the Federation of Mbedkarites and Buddhist organizations over a period of four years, five years, um, they unveiled a room dedicated to him. And he is the only Indian to have a room named after him at Grey's Inn. And the portrait that you refer to was donated by the Federation of Mbedkarites and Buddhist Organizations UK. And uh, we, were, we were very involved with it. Um, in 1920, Camden Council approved the museum status of 10 King Henry Road, NW3, the house where Dr. Mbedka lived from 1921 to 1922. It already has a commemorative blue plaque unveiled in 1991, uh, incidentally by Roy Hattersley, MP, and Glenda Jackson, the actress, uh, you, you, you might be interested in. Um, I thought it was such a magnificent thing, you know, to happen. And permission uh, for museum, retrospective museum status for this house was refused by Camden Council. A public inquiry was held in 2019. And in March, and I'm, I'm very honored to have been involved with the, uh, with the preparation for that. And on March 2020, Mr. Robert, Robert Jenrick, the then Secretary of State of Housing, Communities and Local Government, who had recovered the appeal in this case, um, in September, just, just as the inquiry started, agreed with the public inquiry's findings and granted retrospective permission for the Embedco Museum of London. So if you're ever in London, please do visit. It's, it's, uh, it's something I've been involved with as part of the Embedco Memorial uh, Committee that has developed the house from what it was to what it is now. Since 2015, Lord Harris of Pentragath has hosted a celebration of Dr. Mbedka's birth in the House of Lords that I co-chair. And this year, we're holding the event on the 11th of May. And uh, we have a number of speakers lined up. And one of them is, is the actor Nigel Planer. You may, may not know him, but he described Dr. Mbedka as his hero. So I could not help resist inviting her because I'm, I'm a great supporter. And Lord Mayor, I have invited you as well to attend and I, I really hope that you will be able to attend. And you re certainly need the recognition for the work you've been doing here. Um, moving on to caste discrimination. I'm nearly finished. <laughs> I've been talking a bit long. Uh, moving on to caste discrimination. Dr. Mbedkar in his paper, Caste in India, describes the India's caste system as having features that include hierarchy, endogamy, graded occupation, and restrictions on temple worship. It's over 70 years since untouchability was made unlawful in India's constitution, and yet crimes against this branch of humanity in India continue in the worst of ways, whether it's rapes or beatings or, or incarcerations. And one of the people who's incarcerated at the moment is a human rights activist and academic who is actually the, 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 the husband of Dr. Mbedka's great-granddaughter. And he's lying, he's there in prison, uh, for two years today, uh, Dr. Anand Teltumde, and he's not even been given a hearing for a bail. So we are where we are, and more crimes, uh, you know, there are crimes that are on the, on, on the crime sheets, and there's some that don't even get reported. And uh, so, so that's where we are. But what's so amazing, and I suppose not very surprising, is that caste and caste discrimination travels, 
And Dr. Ambedkar said is that wherever uh, an Indian goes, he will take his caste with him. And research has confirmed that caste affects South Asian communities. And we're fortunate to have equality in human rights, laws that help prevent and, if necessary, deal with le legally with many forms of discrimination in the UK. And many migrants like me, you know, I came to England in 1968 as a small girl, um, have benefited from those uh, protections and opportunities that this wonderful country has, has given us to be able to progress. And many of us you know, owe this, you know, to, to our progress to this. And there's ample evidence of caste-based discrimination, not only in uh, reports by, for example, the Anti-Caste Discrimination Alliance in 2009 called A Hidden Apartheid, but also in the government commission reports by the National Institute of Economic and Social Research. And, you know, I, I could just give you an example of how it manifests itself. You know, we had a case of a woman in Derby uh, who was discriminated by her so-called higher caste female carer, and as a result, her care was neglected. You know, she wasn't bathed properly, she wasn't fed properly. And we have a bus driver, bus company in Southampton, where they had to change all of the shifts between the Indian workers so that the high caste people wouldn't work with the low caste bus conductors. Now, those are just examples of how it manifests itself in their cases going through the courts, and a lot of them are settling um, out of court as well. And the government uh, has had a law uh, since 2010 within the Equality Act to add caste as a protected characteristic. And in 2013, that law was, became a duty on government. Uh, but the government has said that it doesn't want to uh, implement this law and instead repeal it. So we are where we are. But caste discrimination cases have also raised their heads in other countries, including the United States, for example, the Cisco case. In Canada, there's another case going through about a worker in New Zealand. So promoting Dr. Mbedka's life and work and his books he has left us, um, you know, give us some understanding about how we can make more just societies no matter where we're based. And his final message to us was educate, agitate, organize. And it is a slogan that first appeared in print in 1883. In this country, the political manifesto of the Democratic Federation, of which William Morris, whom Dr. Mbedka refers to in his Annihilation of Caste speech, was a treasurer. And this slogan that has become a slogan for the Fabian Society, which um, the Labour Party is, uh, is, is based on too, in simple terms, and social reformers believed that success can only be achieved by organized effort. And to me, the, 1980, uh, sorry, the 1883 leaflet spells this out beautifully. I've always heard Dr. Mbedkar's educate, agitate, and organize, but never really thought about it. But this leaflet in 1883 describes it beautifully, Ravi. I'm sure you'll hear it for the first time. Educate, we shall need all our intelligence Agitate, we shall need all our enthusiasm. Organize, we shall need all our force. I think that sums up for anything that we need, uh, wherever we want to make social change, we need all of those. And Dr. Mbedka Starr continues to rise around the world as a beacon for social justice. In 2020, 21, 22, the city of Burnby, Canada, proclaimed 14th of April as Dr. B.R. Mbedka Day of Equality. The city of Surrey in Canada marked a similar similar proclamation in 21 in this year. This April, the province of British Columbia made the same proclamation and also proclaimed April as a Dalit History Month. And in the United States, the state of Colorado proclaimed 14th of April 2022 as Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Equity Day. These very bold moves by city councils in America and Canada are very, very welcome for our movement. And they're shining a light on Dr. Mbetka and his mission for a more just world. And therefore, I congratulate Coventry's Equality Group and Coventry Council for its pioneering work on marking its Equality Day on the 14th of April and remembering Dr. Mbetka. And I'm grateful that Mr. Saxena has supported this as well. And I think 
perhaps we should be looking for the 14th of April to become the International Day of Equality. And uh, this is something we've been lobbying, I've been lobbying the Indian government on for many years. And, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, Ram said, you know, we have days named after Mother's Day and, I don't know, Pasty Day, whatever. So let's have Equality Day on the 14th of April. So um, I will just end with some final words. Thank you so much for bearing with me and my long speech. But I wanted to share so much about Dr. Ambedkar. And as we are talking about him, let's, let's really discuss him as, uh, you know, the many facets that he had. So I will end with some words from Dr. Ambedkar's annihilation of caste speech. Just two lines. A just society is that society in which ascending sense of reverence and descending sense of contempt is dissolved into a creation of a compassionate society. Happy Equality Day. Thank you. Thank you, Santosh. I think it's, uh, uh, those who are actually more into this issue understand where it comes from. And some may be feeling bored. I understand also because there are some, not everybody on the same line. In fact, I was uh, listening earlier an Indian radio, an Indian lady who is a presenter. She says, when we say things, sometimes people are not up to the same level. Their thinking is different. They think we are talking uh, something which is not uh, appropriate. But this is brilliant. Therefore, uh, uh, reminding us about Dr. Medgar's contribution and where he started from. And some of us suffered that pain, uh, including me, when we were not allowed to sit on the same place. Uh, in the school, we had to bring our own mat from home to sit on before we uh, were allowed. Uh, and also, one extra, sorry, I'm just open. Uh, Santosh, I raised my emotions back. Uh, some of us had to be forced to sweep the floor because uh, we were coming from that area of the society, before we go back home, wash ourselves, come back to school again to sit alongside others. So they, uh, Dr. Mirka was a century before us, so he had suffered more. So where he started from, where he is. There are three people in my eyes, perhaps some of you might have heard me saying this. Abraham Lincoln, he changed the millions, uh, life of millions of people, by abolishing slavery legally. After that, if anybody changed a society in the terms of millions, that was Dr. Ambedkar. All those people, I mean, in those days, the old days, those who didn't suffer, they wouldn't know, but some of us did. We were not allowed to go to somebody's house. A dog can go in, a cow is there, worshipped, a person like me or my forefathers were not even allowed near those houses. Just see the discrimination of it. And that mentality is not gone. It's still here. Some of them, they refine the language. They talk that language which is acceptable to law. Because I suffered here as well somewhere. I'm not going to mention though much to us going that one. Uh, it's, uh, cause I remember when we launched the Castwatch UK and we had a number of conferences and so on. Uh, so this is, the, this is the depth of the problem still going on. That's why Equality Group is more doing its work. Uh, so make sure we see the equality at every level. Not just for me, just for somebody else, but for everybody at every level. That's what Dr. Midgar wanted. So uh, thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Santosh, coming from London, delivering this uh, lecture for this Equality Day and putting that into prospect. Uh, thank you very much. Man, may I also request Lord Mayor to present Santosh uh, with a little token of uh, friendship. Uh, <clears throat>
Can I also thank Sanjay? He is actually relaying live uh, on the Facebook. This conversation is going live on Facebook. Sanjay Jagatia with Munna sitting there. And the, uh, Sanjay is the chief executive for Ekta Group. Uh, that's why Ekta Unity Group. That's what we did last year together. And he's there to help me as, uh, as this group again. Thank you very much, Sanjay and Munna. Uh, can, uh, can I also say, well, Lord Mayor, I thought I should give you the exercise, uh, get better, more exercise. <laughs> Can I request Mr. Sena, please? Uh, Lord Mayor, have to do it again. Yeah. I'm trying to get the cufflinks myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Now I think it is the time. I know uh, uh, some of you might have heard me before. Those are Indian background. They understand the time scale easily. We are celebrating Visakhi. And also one of the things, Maya is here. And thankfully, she is very good uh, in those understanding uh, things. In South India, today is also start of New Year. We call it Bengali New Year or Kerala New Year. Vasakhi is, I think you call it Boshakhi rather than Vasakhi, yeah. So it's a start of the new year and it's also issue of a, a, a celebration of equality. I think that's where I was coming back on. Uh, with that, uh, I, what I was going to mention on the time scale wise, before Guru Nanak's time, he was born in 90, uh, so, uh, 1469, right? Uh, Mr. Samuel will uh, vouch me more about this, because uh, I know I'm right. Uh, <laughs> on that point, l the mayor of this city was appointed in 1438, before Guru Nanak's time. So when I was a Lord Mayor, I used to bow, uh, uh, sort of uh, brag about it, that we are the mother of local democracy as a city. Uh, that's where he started from, first mayor, uh, somewhere in the, in the area, 1348. So we have a ceremonial role of Lord Mayor. Obviously, uh, then about 55 years ago, it was uh, given upgraded as Lord Mayor. But we have also executive group. That's what I'm trying to explain. And Lord Mayor doesn't hold the executive powers. He's the head of the city, symbolize the city. Wherever he goes, he's the first citizen of the city. That's why we call him his worshipful. But on the other hand, where is the power game? And I am very proud to say uh, I've been friendly with my leader since very long time. So I have an honor to invite uh, George, Councillor George Duggan, who is the leader of the council. And I remember previously said uh, in Punjabi we say uh, oh, Hindi, Hathi ke paon mein sabhi ka paon. Everybody else is under the leader. So that's it. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the elephants Fort is bigger, everybody else's two feet are smaller here and there, they are kind of just with. So I present to you uh, George, George, uh, George, George Duggan, Councillor George Duggan, leader. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Ram, and uh, welcome um, everybody. Uh, Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Deputy Leader, um, uh, fellow councillors, and, in, and indeed everyone. Santos, that was absolutely inspirational and the vast array of knowledge that was shown was, was absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, very clearly, I could have listened to that all night. So you didn't worry about how long that went on, because it was fantastic. Uh, Ram, can I say to you, I think this is amazing. Uh, I really do. I don't know how much you've done in respect to the program, uh, but I think you know, what's happened here is an inspiration, a speech, uh, and indeed music, bringing everybody together uh, in the way that, you know, only we can do, I think, uh, in this great city uh, of ours. But colleagues, isn't it great that we can meet together in person rather than over Teams? You know, I, I do a lot of Teams meetings, I chair a lot of Teams meetings, but I can say you lose a lot uh, in respect to, to Teams 
It's great to be back uh, in person. Can I say in particular a big welcome to Hitesh Saxena uh, for coming to Coventry. Um, and we're so pleased to be able to join the celebrations today. Uh, I know you're only down the road in Birmingham, but it is a difficult journey. Sometimes it's easier to get from London to Coventry than it is to get from Coventry to Birmingham, and, and many of us uh, actually know that. Uh, but, colleagues, we are a city that is famed uh, around the world for our work in respect to peace and reconciliation, for being a city uh, of welcome, and for being a proud multicultural uh, city where all people live as equals. And uh, the Lord Mayor has actually mentioned about how quickly people feel at home, and I think that is a story that resonates uh, with all of us. It is a message, of course, that we've been proud to spread um, far and wide um, during the last 12 months, uh, which, in which we've celebrated uh, being a city of culture, UK city of culture. We're about on the final legs uh, in respect to that, colleagues. But again, I think we can be proud as a city that it actually took place in the first place, uh, given all the uncertainties around the early uh, months of the pandemic. Uh, we, we have been used to roll to inspire others, to follow our footsteps, and we love to see the joy and the gifts that diversity and welcome uh, can bring uh, to communities. Today it's important because it reminds us that we must never stop this vital work of leading that call. Colleagues may in this chamber be aware of what's called the One Country Plan. Uh, and that really is something that we bring together all of our aspirations, not just as a city council, um, but as a city in a political uh, document. And one of our, one of our um, aims uh, is to improve um, outcomes and tackle inequalities within it, all communities. And that is identified as starting this year. We're beginning to consult on that and we'll finish in 2030, and we'll revise it after that. Equality Day reminds us that there are many in the world today who are still suffering inequalities and injustice, and we've heard a lot about that tonight, and quite rightly so, because we should never forget uh, that our work is never done uh, in respect to equalities. There are still people who are persecuted because of who they are, for their faith, the colour of their skin, or the way they choose to live their lives. Sadly, this year, we have seen what can happen when that message of equality and friendship goes unheeded. The terrible war being waged by Putin uh, and his government is destroying thousands of lives, thousands of communities who were just like us, you know, six, seven weeks ago, just going about our normal business, and then all of a sudden, death and destruction of things that they hold so dear. Our city has sent messages of support and friendship to the Ukrainian people, and we have called for a swift return to peace and an end to hostilities. And I do believe those people who have violated uh, and you know, committed war crimes should be put on trial as soon as that is practically possible. That call is being echoed across the world, and we send our thoughts and prayers to those who are suffering. And I want to pay tribute to the Lord Mayor for the work that he has done with the Ukrainian communities uh, in you know, easing what is very much a difficult situation. And you know, there's no way uh, that people can totally feel at ease, but, but John, has done that with various uh, knights uh, and all the rest of it. I want to pay tribute to John in respect to that. To see such events in today's world has shocked us all, and it reminds us of the words of Dr. Ambeka uh, and the work for a world of equals where there is no room for aggression or hostility. Commentary will always be proud to lead that call, and we are proud to celebrate Equality Day and all that it stands for, and I agree with what uh, Ram has said. There are so many other days that we celebrate, so probably why not Equality Days? So thank you very much. Uh.
Thank you, Lida. This is great initiative, always uh, very encouraging for us uh, when leader speaks, obviously gives us support. It's great, uh, and, and uh, I feel very proud that we've been friends since very long time, and that's good. Thank you. Thank you, George. I mentioned previously two, I think I'm, I missed one link when I said there are three people who changed the world. One was uh, Abraham Lincoln who changed the society completely by law. All of the slavery was finished. Then the second was Lord, uh, Dr. Mirdkar, who changed with the Constitution uh, millions and millions of people who were not treated as human, they were treated as subhumans. Even Churchill said once in his speech that Indians, uh, when Gandhi was uh, uh, talking about this issue, in one his speech he, in, in, in one of the uh, Tory groups uh, and so on, he was the opposition leader, he mentioned that particularly that they are talking about uh, um, independence, but they haven't allowed their own people to be independent, and he mentioned his hub, uh, they are treated like subhumans. That's, a, that's a, the second part. The third part, which I didn't mention, I got, got on, that is Men, uh, Dr., um, uh, Nelson Mandela. Remember, we all were here. I remember when we used to shout, free Nelson Mandela, we were shouting in the streets, and Lord Mayor will be very, uh, uh, and so is the leader, we'll be remembering in those days. Uh, my predecessor, who was a councillor uh, in uh, Upper Stoke, uh, when I took over from him because he left us somewhere and he was uh, championing on it so at that time the leadership of that time said yes we will build a Mandela house some of you might have seen the Mandela house where now is a Herb Art Gallery on the top they used to be Mandela house so yes these are three people who actually changed the world not in thousands but millions that's where three people are actually outstanding in the world. They are international leaders in that sense. Uh, uh, now, uh, without going too far, I think may I request, uh, before I say to a deputy leader, obviously deputy leader is a friend, uh, as since many of you know, uh, Councillor Abdul Khan. He is a deputy leader and also a cabinet member with the responsibility of equality. I can say publicly, and some of you already know, in Coventry, there is a a road specifically named about an Indian woman's name, a first time in the city, a road was named after an Indian woman. And that happened to be my wife. Those who go on the Jimmy Hill Way, you will see there on the side uh, where there's a, a Formula One and so on, that's called Mitola Kaklos. And that wouldn't have happened without the sport. In fact, he made it. Uh, that's where I have respect for my colleague uh, and deputy leader, Councillor Abdul Khan. So I request Abdul Khan, please uh, uh, address the uh, uh, gathering. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. Can I begin also thanking you, Ram, for all the hard work you've done in bringing, a, in bringing us all here together. But there is one criticism. You mentioned a number of days, and I was disappointed that you mentioned Fish and Ship Day. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the, the most famous day. <laughs> right, uh, we'll begin then. Uh, Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Your Excellency, Mr. Saxena, Leader of the Council, uh, and I want to introduce a new friend to Coventry, Mr. Rabi Al Hafid. Uh, of the, uh, he was the president of the Musul Foundation. He came to see me today because he was very impressed with the uh, a conference he attended which the Lord Mayor and Ram Laka took part in and as far as I understood his uh, uh, discussion with me that he very much wanted to be a part of Coventry's success in reaching out to many different cities uh, and countries all around the world. So welcome to Coventry and I look very uh, much to working with you in the future. So I'd like to thank uh, Ram once again and all the organisers for inviting me here to speak. As cabinet member who leads uh, policing inequalities, I want to ensure that no one in Coventry is left behind, regardless of their sex and other factors like race, religion, sexual orientation, geography, socio-economic background. We're all fortunate to work and live in a beautiful multicultural city, a city that prides itself on welcoming people from all around the world and helps all communities to live and work happily together. In our amazing city, we see temples, gurdwaras, churches, mosques, 
and a variety of other places of worship. We see celebrations from all cultures and we enjoy, enjoy incredible music, dance, cuisine and art. And of course, we welcome those who have no faith in Coventry as well. The strength of Coventry lies in its diversity. We have seen how the people we welcome make us stronger. And that is why we are known as the City of Peace and Reconciliation. Therefore, within the, the Cabinet portfolio of policing and equalities, we continue to drive the equality, diversity and inclusion agenda at every opportunity. We raise the profile of, of this work among our, among our fellow elected members and continually challenge the officers who report to us to show how we are delivering results. We are serious about our legal responsibilities on equalities and want to see that translate into real progress. Coventry City Council recognises that people still experience inequality because of their background. The Council will therefore lead by example and not tolerate discrimination, harassment and victimisation on the grounds of any other protected groups. Coventry City Council is committed to its continuing duty as a public authority and will have due regard to, to the need to eliminate discrimination, harassment and any other conduct prohibited under the Equality Act 2010. We are committed to recognising and celebrating diversity and ensuring equality of opportunity both as a provider and commissioner of services and as a large employer. Developing a culture that embeds the effective management of equality, diversity and inclusion in our day-to-day -day practices, policies, procedures and through our external relationships as part of the general public sector duty, we are required to comply with a specific duty to publish a set of equality objectives which will further the aims of the general duty. Coventry City Council's aim is to strive to enhance a culture of inclusivity at the Council and ensure that people, they are, they, sorry, people feel they are able to bring their whole selves to work. Once people feel included, we are able to make the most of talents and experience and create a workshop where places, so where people are valued. Workforce diversity are working on several initiatives to ensure this continues to progress, such as the launch of Coventry's new workforce diversity and inclusion strategy, which included a week of diversity and in inclusive inclusion activity to enable the whole workforce to participate took place in June 2021. A number of nationally recognised guest speakers delivered a range of diversity and inclusion workshops which are now available for viewing on YouTube. Adopting the Race Equality Code, the introduction of the diversity and inclusion as a standing agenda item at all management meetings we have introduced anonymised recruitment practices to reduce the level of potential unconscious bias uh, within our shortlisting process. And in the course of that particular meeting, the leader of the council was there, and as soon as he heard officers suggesting that, before I could say my piece, he quickly said that we must do that. And I'm very grateful to, to him for acknowledging that that was uh, going to ensure that we were more likely to become a, a more diverse work for, workplace. Or that. It is very important for the Council and for our city that we have a diverse and balanced workforce who can meet the needs of our diverse Coventry residents. For all, from all the achievements you can see, we are on the road to making significant progress in this area and will continue our efforts to become a leader in this field. I look forward to working with you in the months ahead to ensure that diversity and equality are always at the heart of our council as well as our city. Now I would like to acknowledge uh, the work of Peter Barnett and his team, Navjot, Sanaira, Mo, Jasper and of course Grace who is really uh, pushing the agenda. Once again, thanks for the invitation to speak today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.
Thank you, Deputy Leader. Thank you very much for this um, uh, very warm words and obviously action behind it, not just warm words, actions behind it. I already mentioned earlier uh, how the actions uh, speak actually in reality. And obviously that's the issue which uh, uh, Santosh and Paramjit mentioned earlier. Uh, I think the officers are working on it as I understand that Peter and his team are working with uh, Abdul to get that uh, sorted at some stage. Uh, I was expecting perhaps he, Abdul might declare it now, but obviously it can be done at some stage. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Abdul. Uh, Abdul Salam Khan, obviously he's, uh, uh, obviously now I don't have to say more. Uh, 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 he is a man with the action. Uh, now to change the mood, I think it's right that we should uh, have some uh, entertainment. Uh, Irina King. Uh, some of you might have heard her before, especially when she's with uh, my good friend Prue. And uh, she's part of the uh, Godiva sisters. And Prue is here. Thank you very much for coming, Prue. And uh, Rina, uh, uh, Mrs. Rina King? Yes, I think that's best. I, I was expecting Roman come here with you, uh, perhaps singing an Indian song, but it doesn't matter. You do it what you like. Thank you very much. I know. I won't break it. No, I, normally, I normally break things at home. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Lord Mayor, uh, Lady Mary, and uh, distinguished guests. Um, thank you, Councillor Lam, for inviting me. And, you know, I was just standing and thinking, I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm proud that I live in such beautiful place, like Coventry, where equality is one of the main values of our city. Uh, my husband... Uh, was born in, uh, in Coventry, and I came to Coventry 11 years ago, and I fell in love in this, in this place. And then I met uh, our beautiful lady Godiva, who gathered so many different ladies. And you know that we all are different, but we are equal. And I feel equal in, this, in, in our city, so thank you so much for, for this feeling. Uh, I'm from Ukraine, and my mom is here today. Well, she, she, do, she doesn't understand English, so I will translate you later everything. And uh, I would like to perform, first of all, I would like to say thank you so much, Lord Mayor, for supporting not only our community, supporting all Ukrainian people at this difficult, difficult time. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ram, for, for your kind donations as well. And thank you, everyone who supports Ukraine in different ways. Thank you so much, not only from myself personally, but from, from my parents and from people, all people from Ukraine, because I'm in contact with some of my friends and their husbands are sitting in front lines. And everything what I do, just, I, I do send them pictures. What do we do, how we support them, and it keeps them going, that knowing that they're not only over there, that we all know and we support in different ways. So, um, and if I... I will play here. Yeah, yeah, you can move to Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to play Ukrainian tango, and uh, it's tango about love, but uh, love about your motherland and a place where you, you are born. I was rehearsing today. My father was crying because he had to, he had to leave his place, and he hopes this terrible war finishes soon and he, he will come back uh, to his home to his place where he was born, place where he, he actually loves his place, like we all do, right? So this song about motherland. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic. Uh, music is always uh, touching. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Deputy mentioned uh, earlier about um, uh, 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 Mosul Foundation, actually. That's where we started from. And I just agree with the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. We welcome you. Uh, in his desire was actually to hold that conference here at that time. And it was difficult for us to manage because of the pandemic, but then in the end we managed the way we did. Uh, thank you very much for uh, great work for Mosul Foundation. That's, uh, yeah, that's acknowledged. Uh, now I think we are in the mood of this uh, uh, celebrations, as we are, and time is also coming towards uh, the conclusion. So I cut out some of the other things. I, I'll request um, Manjeet, Manjeet Koratan. Uh, she's our Punjabi singer. She's also a, she's, she's a, a volunteer for many areas, uh, so, and always have been helpful. Every time I requested her, she's there for the Equality Day. Thank you, Manjeet. Your choice. Respected Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor's, brothers and sisters, this poem is about Dr. Ambedkar Sahib, <coughs> San Punjabi. कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई कविता गजल महान लिखे पिमराओ दी योगता दे सदके भारत देश दस जो संविधान लिखे संघर्ष शील इस जीवन विच उच्च विद्या पाई विदेशा चो गणतंत्र संविधान लिख दिता पाखे लिखत च जान प्राण लिखे रंग नस्ल रंग नस्ल जात दे पेदानु एक कोहड कहे एक पाप कहे एना ऊंच नीच दिया परमानु सारी खलकत ताई शराप लिखे पढ़ लिख के मर्ज पहचानन ले मसीहा बन खड़े गरीबा ले दे वोट दा हक मजलूम ताई उची नेतकता दे प्राण लिखे कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई कविता गजल महान लिखे पिमराओ दी योगता दे सदके भारत देश दा जो संविधान लिखे बराबरता बराबरता दा हो का दिता सी भारत दी जनता तारन ले एकता दा नारा लाया सी दैंत वितकरे दे मारन ले हक न्या ले लड़न जूझन ले लोड नहीं गोई ते सिक्के दी कोल क्रांति दी स्याही दवा अंदर 
चुकी कलम बन बन बलवान लिखे कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई कविता गजल महान लिखे पिमराओ दियोगता दे सदके भारत देश दा जो संविधान लिखे कायर ते कायर ते डरपोक दे लक्षण होए जुल्म ता मीच ले अखा नु हक पीख नहीं खोया मिलदे ने दसया किंज लड़ना हक्का लई परवाह नहीं जे कोर गरीबी ए परवाह नहीं जे कोर गरीबी ए गैरत लई जूझना हक साडा कोहा दूर वितकरे कर दते सब सांझे हक सम्मान लिखे कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई कविता गजल महान लिखे पिमराओ दी योगता दे सदके भारत देश दा जो संविधान लिखे काश मेरे काश मेरे देश दे लीडर भी काश मेरे देश दे लीडर भी थोड़ी सोच ते अमल कमा सकदे कोई उच्ची नीवी जात नहीं इंसान दी पहचान बना सकदे तन कपड़ा सिर ते छत सब दे तन कपड़ा सिर ते छत सब दे भुखे टिड परन दी अग बुझा सकदे सब वर्ण कबीले ना मातर तुसी ऐसे डूंगे पैगाम लिखे कोई लेख कहानी लिख दिंदा कोई कविता गजल महान लिखे ताई उन छत्र पोगल थानू भारत मां दा पूत महान लिखे थैंक यू थैंक यू मनजीत आई थिंक दोस हु कुड डिडंट अंडरस्टैंड ऑब्वियसली इट्स पंजाबी सो व्हाट एक्चुअली व्हाट व्हाट संतोष सेड अर्लीया इन हर स्पीच i think you can sum it up into that point uh, in poem which is uh, written by manjeet herself uh, you can see and she is very much uh, into music plays harmonium and other instruments obviously i was a bit more cautious in case she brings them then it, it takes time to adjust them so <laughs> i was happy if she just sings that rather than with all the instruments uh, and i'm very grateful that she's here thank you very much manjeet and also one thing we forget sometimes she does so much volunteer work and few years back when we started this council start the good citizens award and she was one one of the recipients in the early stages because of her work was they recognized by the council thank you that's very helpful thank you very much and now i think i i know i got mr joshi ram he's got his own points uh, but i think we are catching up the time so are the uh, don't want to give more uh, 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 sitting longer than what we should be and time is booking uh, time booking is in order so with that i i also thanks mr joshi ram for getting prepared i thought i'll fit you wherever i can if i get the slot but obviously time is already caught up uh, and thank you very much for all of you first can i thank lord mayor again for his support and lady mayoress and that sometimes you always forget i remember most of you will remember when meeta was with me she was in the wheelchair i was dragging her everywhere sometimes she was even sitting next to me to sleep so i used to know get get up, get up and walk so it is unless i practice the equality myself it is no point expecting somebody else to do it so she was always with me some people will know even during the uh, basakhi procession perhaps i was the only lord mayor who ever took the whole round in the wheelchair with my turban on uh, and the whole city uh, during a procession uh, i'm a bit crazy on this equality issue so that's where perhaps uh, I, that may be my downfall as well on on times but that's uh, that's uh, sometimes you have to pay the price for what you stand for and i thank you very much lord mayor and also again i said 
uh, George is here on my request, and it is always an honor, George, to be with you, or to be uh, to listen to you, your wise words. And Deputy Leader, thank you very much for gracing the place, uh, time with us for the equality. It's your baby, actually. <laughs> uh, we are just, just put soldiers on it and make sure that it happens. Uh, that's, uh, apart from that, the council staff who actually did manage this. Vicky, Alan, thank you very much for making this happen. I, I was so worried about it. Uh, how we had uh, some discussion earlier, how we're going to see it, how we're going to do, where things are. It has to be taking some planning. And Vicky went there on the phone with me first, and obviously I was here, so these things are ironed out, and thankfully it's worked. And can I also thank Sanjay again for his contribution for being, uh, obviously previously, and now relaying uh, uh, live on Facebook. Because uh, 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 as I said before, last year it was very much his initiative to put it together as a, as a joint uh, effort with the Equality Group and ECTA Group. And thank you very much for that. And also, I, sh uh, I know Deputy Leader already mentioned the staff. Uh, Peter Barnett, CBE, Sanaira, uh, and uh, Ravjot, and one person we missed this time, she was very instrumental, very helpful, Pooja Aluwalia. I'm not sure as, uh, her mom is here today because uh, she was supposed to be here. I'm not sure whether she could or couldn't. So those are the people who actually worked behind the scenes and to support us on the equality issues. And I'm very, very grateful for putting the effort into it and hopefully carry on for, for the future as well, Peter. Thank you very much. So with that, I think this part is concluded. Obviously, we have to pay. Uh, cashier is there. So we have to pay £100 donation to the Lord Mayor's Charity for Ukraine and also £100 for, uh, um, yeah, for uh, Langaride. Uh, that's uh, the uh, formal part is done. Now we will be moving into the Lord Mayor's hosp Hospitality uh, for a cup of tea, which is thank you very much, Lord Mayor, again. And also you, you will have samosas too with a cup of tea. So obviously, uh, I guess some of us are maybe tired sitting here since a long time, so it's, it's nice to join there. Again, for coming here and joining with us on this specific day of equality, equality day of equality, equality day as we call it, on 14th of April, uh, every year it will carry on. Even when I'm not there, it will still be there, and many people will be carrying on this baton, and hopefully, and this is the part of the structure for future that we do not tolerate, tolerate discrimination anywhere. We carry on, we fight and we raise it when we possibly can. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for coming here.